We're live with Conjit Farrell, and today we are trying out the brand new Zoom Live webinar feature, which means that Conjit and I are actually doing a Zoom Live, which allows us to use Zoom to go live. And then in the future, as I get better at using this, I'll be able to invite people on as a panelist, and you'll be able to actually come on and share the screen and ask a question if you would like to. So I did a podcast with Conjit. Um, a few months back, and I think that my episode just aired. Kanjit, remind me the name of your show. It's the Stay Inspired Podcast. Uh-oh, and I can't hear her. Let's see. Do you have yours? I can hear you. I can hear you. You can hear me. Hang on. Okay. My volume. Okay. I know what I did. I turned my volume all the way down. Okay. Now I can hear you. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> whenever I try some sort of new technology, um, the mishaps happen. So oh, of for, for the Mary Shores plan uh, fans, let me tell you what happened with mini chats yesterday. It was a complete disaster during my Hey House Live. But anyway, I'm <laughs> so excited to have you here. And Kanjit, remind me the name of your show, your podcast. Yes, my um, podcast is a Stay Inspired podcast where we're all about helping good people live the lives that they deserve. So I actually, sometimes when I go on a show, I really, you know, they're interviewing me, but a lot of times we have a few minutes to talk, like right before the show or right after the show. And sometimes I'm actually more interested in what the host is doing because I get to learn so many things from all of these hosts. And when Kanjit told me her story, I was just like incredibly impressed with this young lady and her theories and what she is doing. And she is an author. She's a CEO, a licensed marriage and family therapist, and her therapeutic approach is electric. She is firmly rooted in CBT and currently completing advanced coursework in sex therapy. Woohoo! That always sounds dicey, but I'm sure in reality it's not. It's so not. <laughs> <laughs> she is the founder of the Inspired Journey Counseling Center in downtown LA. And we're going to talk today about her revolutionary new technique that will help you learn how to harness the power of science and faith to consciously attract the right mate for your unique relationship goals. You okay. can see how that's perfectly aligned. I mean, she's got the word consciousness in there, science and faith. That's just the same as me. I'm always talking about science and spirituality. I'm really very goal oriented. So yesterday I was just talking about the core four and how excited I was about the core four. And so like, you know, talking about relationship goals, it's just perfectly, I can see why I wanted, wanted you um, to come on to this Facebook live. And also I want to say that um, I hope Conjit is okay with me sharing this, that she is um, on bed rest. And so her computer screen might shake a little bit just because, um, She's probably got it prepped up on her very pregnant <laughs> belly. Now, so what this means is because we're on Zoom, I won't be able to see your comments like right in the R chat, but I have got it pulled up. So if on my phone, so if any of you have any questions for Conjit or for me, please go ahead and put them in the comments that you see and we will address them. So we're talking about relationships today and go ahead and tell us what sets your method apart from, from other ones. So um, I'm going to talk to you like how I talk to my clients. This is the first thing that I ask when we talk about relationships because people always say, oh, I want this kind of relationship. And I'm like, hold on a second. So let's ask. Put me Can in the hot have... seat. Okay. So if you think of relationships like schools, okay. Do you want a Harvard level relationship, right? Do you want like a Berkeley or USC, UCLA level? Do you want a Cal State or a state school level? Or do you want a junior college level relationship, right? Yeah, I right? understand. You understand? Because mm -hmm. look, if you want a Harvard quality of relationship, you need to understand that's going to take more focus, strategy, skills, discipline, right? Conscious choosing and mindfulness to manifest, okay? Most women will say, I want a Harvard level relationship, but they don't want to eat. They want to do junior college level work to get oh it. Oh my gosh. I'm so loving you. That is a perfect <laughs> metaphor. So I'm going to put myself out there to say, 
I want a Harvard level relationship. Okay. Okay. So then great, because I never presume to know, and I don't make any judgment about whatever level you choose. I just need to know so that I know what information to give you. Now so I will say when I was married, that was probably a junior college level. So I was right. married for 10 years. And you know, at, and when I was 20, I didn't understand things like consciously choosing and relationship Correct. goals. In fact, I'm, I think I just thought, um, find the guy that you're super attracted to and you have a lot of fun with and just go with that. So. That's, you know what? And there's nothing wrong with that. There's no judgment placed on that. It's just that, um, you know, there's so much new, new research and there's so much new information that science has given us mm -hmm. that we don't need to um, be haphazard with dating, right? We can actually right. manifest the kind of relationship that we want. There's enough information to do it. But I think you brought up something good. Um, when you're 20, you don't have the mindset, right? right? You're not thinking of how do I, you know, what is the consequence of not being um, conscious about my choice and mindful about my choice? Being a therapist and having done it for a decade now, I see the consequence of not being mindful and conscious, right? And so that's what made me develop my research and my theories because I'm like, I see the other side on my couch. And if in the beginning we were just a little more conscious, we were a little more mindful, a little more intentional about our choice, oh my God, <laughs> you wouldn't be on my couch. And like, I, I simultaneously want you and don't want you on my couch. And if you are on my couch, I don't want you to stay. I want you to get the lessons and get on. So that's kind of where my uh, work originates from. But the core of my work looks at things that are as they are. I'm not giving you subjective stuff. I'm not giving you conscious opinion. I like to look at science and say, okay, well, okay, now let's look at the facts. And if you know what the facts are about dating and some things about men, how can you apply this to your dating practice so that you can manifest the kind of partner that you want? I think that that sounds brilliant. <laughs> and I think that it's very um, necessary as we are coming more and more from broken homes that there isn't, yes. there isn't that leadership to teach us that, you know, if, if someone would have had right. that conversation with me when I was a teenager or maybe in my young twenties, I might have a different situation right now. So, um, right. yeah. And thank you so much for sharing this wonderful information. Yeah. It's so haphazard, you know, dating based on a feeling or dating based on it, you know, the way someone looks, but it's like, if you pull back and get the perspective, wait a minute, this is someone that I'm maybe going to share my life with and maybe the mm -hmm. business of marriage. Is this an appropriate partner, right? What are the consequences? They don't teach that. They don't teach on TV. They don't teach you that on TV. Right. So right? if you are listening to this and it resonates with you, please let us know. Or if you have any questions for Conjit, or, you know, this makes you remember your own thoughts as you were younger, or maybe even your own situation, like be thinking, do you want a Harvard letter level Ivy League uh, relationship? Do you want a state school level relationship or a junior college level relationship? And then um, how did you learn about all of this conjit and what was your aha moment? So I was like everyone else. Uh, well, I won't say everyone else, but a lot of women. I came from a broken home, so I didn't have a healthy relationship dynamic model to me. Um, I, I, so when I got out into the dating world, I was just doing anything, doing whatever felt good. And then I'm like, why is nothing working out? I think, you know, I might not be the prettiest woman in the world, but I'm good enough looking and I'm nice. Like, why isn't this happening for me? And then not just me you know, my Latina friends, my Caucasian friends, like everybody was struggling. And I was like, so why are we struggling like this? And this led to my research in undergrad and graduate school. Um, and it just took me on this wild and amazing journey from strip clubs to, you know, scholarly research. And uh, the result is what the, the program that I have and I've created called Dating the Divine Way. Um, and as I learned the little nuggets, I think my aha moment was that um, males and females are truly different when it comes to um, agenda for dating and marriage, right? Yes. Um, 
right? Just really completely different that we can see the same exact things in two completely different ways. And I realized that I was completely illiterate and ignorant about men. I did not understand men at all. So right. Once, once I did, once I did, I just took, I took my ego out of it, you know, cause I was like kind of a young feminist. Well, it should be my way and my time and my, and I'm not saying all feminists are like that, but my particular interpretation, it was just all about me had to hit the pause button and say, you know, maybe what's going on with the men here? What is their point of view and perspective? And so once I started to consider where they were coming from and look at men as humans and a human animals and their point of view on this, it revolutionized my dating experience. I started getting into healthy relationships, lasting relationships. I've been with my husband for seven years. Um, so that was kind of my aha moment when I was like, oh, I need to be thinking about the male perspective too. And I need to be thinking about what is my goal and how do I consider the male perspective when I'm trying to achieve my goal, not just what I think and what I want. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. And I know that I think that it's something very overlooked. I know that I was just talking with a friend this morning and we were having that very same discussion, you know, like what is, what does it mean to be female to, in today's world, especially with the paradigm that's going on? What does it, what does it mean for males? What does it mean for males in different age groups, you know, when we've right. all been conditioned for certain things? And I know today you're going to share three steps of your method. And I'm so excited because number one, I mean, I want to apply this to my own life. I want to just put it in my toolbox of things that I know and learn. I may not be looking to get in a relationship right now today because it's not part of my goals, but I know that when I choose to be in a relationship, I really don't want to make the same mistakes. So let's talk about your three-step method. Okay, Where do we great. start? And you know what? I love what you said there, Mary, because it's like, mm -hmm. this is information that even if you're not looking right away, you should bank it now. Yes. Bank it now, be aware of it now so that when the time comes, you're like, oh, oh, wait. And just the things that I will share with you today can significantly help you to not make, um, to make a better aligned choice. Okay. Yes. Um, so the first thing we already talked about, so that's figuring out what level relationship do you want? Do you want the Harvard? Do you want the junior college, right? And just having that as an orientation and knowing if you want Harvard and you haven't taken courses in um, communication or you know um, building a healthy relationship, get educated. It's not a big deal, right? And those little skills are going to save your marriage, save your relationship. And, and I don't want you to feel like getting a healthy relationship or a healthy marriage or picking the right man is something that's in the sky. It's not. It's just tangible skills. It's a skill set. You can get it. So that's number one. Number yeah. And I, right? before, before we move on, just talking. So step number one, which we, which we were talking about earlier is really determining what level of relationship that you want to have. And I just wanted to say that um, now, you know, I said, I wanted a Harvard level relationship. And I also said that I'm not necessarily looking for a relationship right now. And I think that when you choose Harvard level relationship versus junior college level, then there is a, a part of me that recognize that it's worth the wait. Yeah. Oh, you know, oh, that, yeah. that level of relationship is actually something that is worth the wait. And it's, it's worth it for me to, you know, educate myself, do all the things. Like I said, I'm not looking right this second, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I've spent a lot of times in the, a lot of time in the junior college relationship and maybe even like more like middle school or summer camp. Oh, okay. yes. <laughs> I spent time in the summer right. camp relationship. So, okay, take us on right. to step two. And I just want to say that you are explaining this so well, and I just appreciate it so much. So what Good. is our second step? Oh, I just, one little quick thing to add to okay. what you said, because you hit a point and I was like, yes, that's so true. Look, Harvard relationships, they don't come around that often. Just think of it as a, an inverted funnel. On the bottom, if you're looking at junior college relationships, dime a dozen, baby. Easy, right? Easy to get. Harvard, not that easy. So when you set yourself up for that and you prepare for that, it's important to know, yeah, it's going to take more skill. It's going to take more strategy. Probably going to take more time. 
to manifest, right? But will right. be worth it. But will be worth it. Okay. So I just want to say that. <laughs> I'm even I'm even happier than I was five minutes ago. <laughs> good. Good. Excellent. So then I think you'll like this next part. Um, the number two thing is I want you to be oriented to or at least be familiar with uh, what I call the different types of men. So if you were to pull out something called the normative distribution, normative di distribution is like this chart that looks like a bell curve like this. And um, there's actually a document and a video on this that uh, I think Mary is going to share with you guys um, that goes into this a little bit more that I created for you. But there's something called a bell curve and it exists for everything that exists in the world. And on one side of the bell curve, you have like high, the other side you have low, and then the big chunk of the bell curve is in the middle. So when we think about men, I like to look at it through testosterone. Here's why. High, t high testosterone men, moderate testosterone men, low testosterone men. And here's why. 90% of men in prison are high testosterone men, right? High testosterone men are more likely to um, do domestic violence, to um, have infidelity, to be impulsive, to do all these things that high levels of T, that there's just a manifestation of high levels of T. Now, not, not every high T man will do these things, but I think this is something that you want to be aware of if you're consciously looking for a partner. Do you want to opt into what the experience of being with a high T male is going to be? Or would you prefer something like a moderate T male who could be, uh, 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 I like to say Barack Obama, right? He's successful, he's powerful, but he's not domineering and overbearing, right? Or would you prefer a lower T guy, right? Someone where in the relationship you might be more of the leader or the boss. There's no right or wrong answer, but I think that testosterone is a good um, barometer because it, it will impact your relationship. If you've got a high T guy, that's a different experience than a low T guy. So the chart that I give you helps you to kind of just go, huh, yeah, I never thought about it like with T levels. Like, do I want a high T guy? And what do relationships with high T guys look like? Or, you know what, do I want an MT guy? Reason being too is that, look, if you're looking to get married and have kids, again, T levels are as they are. They gradually lower over time. So I like to joke, I say, if you want um, a guy like 50 Cent, right, a high T guy, get him when he's 50. Because when he's 50, <laughs> the T levels drop, right? And he's more open to bonding and he's open to attachment. Otherwise, you're going to be battling this man's biology. Some people want to do it. There's no judgment. Go for it. I just want you to be aware so that you can make a conscious choice. And I think that that's really brilliant because, you know, for example, what you just said was if it is a high T guy that you're attracted to, then maybe those guys that are a little bit older and more Correct. settled because maybe there is a sweet spot of the level of testosterone that's going to allow them to create a deeper bond. And I've thought about these own my I've thought about these myself. And you know, I know that there are some men watching as well. And so I think that it's good information for them to have too because it might help them to understand their own needs. Yes. And you know, like, so for example, if yes. there is a man watching and he recognizes that he's high T, then he might understand some of his own behaviors a little bit more just knowing that information and might help him establish his relationship goals because he might have different urges, you know, yes. and, and, he, and he might have a different set of challenges. You know, that being said, I know that for myself, I have always wanted the high T guy. Now, I wouldn't have had that vernacular that you're putting towards it, but I always um, went for these guys that were large and in charge. You know, they were hitting it at the gym. They um, always wanted the gorgeous girl on their arm, which probably mm -hmm. says something about me mm -hmm. and like that I needed some sort of validation. They were good looking. They, they really could, they, they kind of lived these fast paced lives. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times they were really hunky and, um, 
you know, worked out a lot. Like I said, they, they had some muscles, but you know, their long-term goals and on the other hand, weren't really in alignment with, with mine. And, and I know for me, what happened was I married someone like that, but as I started to grow and wanting to get into a professional role and I wanted to like, I wanted to start a business and I wanted to pursue basically building an empire is what I like to call it. Yeah. Uh, my, my husband was not on, that is not what he was interested in. And that led to us to having some problems, which, you know, led to us sort of driving away from each other. And I don't want to accuse him of infidelity or anything like that, but I just think it's really interesting what you're saying. And then just recently, so I was at a meeting, I was giving a speech maybe two weeks ago, and I noticed this guy in the audience, and I don't want to say who he is because it's someone that I know, but I noticed this guy in the audience, and he is actually... Um, he's a professional and I'm looking at him in the audience and he's just got this like sweet smile on his face. And he's, he's really, you know, like he's not a large man, he's kind of thin, but he's really clean cut, you know, like he had a sweater with a suit with a shirt on it with a tie underneath and he was super clean cut and he was just smiling and paying attention mm. the entire time to what I was talking about on the speech and he's super young I mean I'm not attracted to him it's not about that but I had this moment of recognition in my mind I looked over at him and I thought why in the world wasn't I attracted to guys like him when I was like 20 23, you know, even 35, mm -hmm. even 38. Why wasn't I attracted to that guy? Because that guy is the guy who is going to be the good husband. That's the guy who's going to get up and make your coffee. That's the guy that's going to shovel the snow. Not that I'm just trying to make right, my right. sleep, but this right. is the guy who makes a good partner. Yes. And I, for whatever reason, didn't recognize that until that moment when I was giving that speech and I looked over at him and I thought he's going to make such an amazing husband for a young lady. You know, he's mm -hmm. got a great career. Mm -hmm. He's, he's very focused. So a lot of times women that I know, you know, they love to have a man with a plan mm -hmm. and I, you know, and this was a guy that was a man with a plan. So I'm going to yes. say Kanjit that I want a moderate T guy in a Harvard level relationship. Okay. Now I, now I want to speak to something you said that was just so like hit the nail on the head for so many women, right? So many women. And by the way, I just want to say, I don't have judgment against any kind of guys, right? Like high T, MT, LT, they all have great things about them. Uh, you know, it's just, they're just facts about what the hormone testosterone does in large supply. If we were to douse you in a bunch of testosterone, your behavior would change. There's actually uh, some interesting uh, uh, stories from trans women, women who have become, or trans men, I'm sorry, women who have become men and who have taken a bunch of testosterone and how their behavior has changed. And they've been like, they say, you know, now my head is, when I look at women, my head is turning and I just, it's just natural. Whereas before they took the testosterone, they thought that men who did that were pigs. But now they understand how the testosterone impacts their body. Now, I'm saying that because there's no judgment about it. We're just talking about things that are as they are. Right. Second, so right? no judgment. And I think you can be compassionate toward men when you understand, oh, you know what? They're, they're dealing with their biology, right? Like, right. got it, right? May not be as much of a character thing, may be more of a biology thing, and it may be much harder for them to get their biology under control, Right. <laughs> And let us know, you know, let us know what your thoughts on this. Like if, if you're a woman, you know, let us know, have you been attracted to the high T guys? Have you been attracted to the, I think a lot of times we've called this alpha or beta, you know, yeah. how, if you're a guy, what do you resonate with? Do you, where do you think that you're at on that spectrum and, and how, you know, that affects your behavior, you know, and, and honestly, I'm, ag I'm agreeing with Conjit. There's no judgment here. No judgment. There's only awareness of where you're at and, and what you're looking for. I've right. actually seen studies too, where women were taking um, testosterone for um, fitness purposes mm -hmm. and they actually became abusive. So yes. I've right. seen those, I've seen that research as well. Right. So, okay. Well, so, um, so, but Mary, I wanted to say something really quickly about something you brought up too. So Mary was saying that, you know, she was drawn to and attracted to the high T guys. So this is what I want to say about that. And we can even say this is number three. Um, 
what is going to be important is that as a woman, there's an internal shift that goes on, goes on. So if you look at relationship as a pie, if you're unintentional, you might let feeling be 90% of your partner pie, right? It's driven most by how you feel around them. But when you get more intentional and you sit back and say, wait a minute, I need a protector, a provider, I need good character, a man with a plan, the, the distribution of the pie changes. So instead of the big charge just being, how does he make me feel? The pie distribution changes to who is he? What is his character? How does he make me feel is a part of it, but it's not as big a part. And when you change the distribution of your pie, oftentimes the type changes. Right. And wasn't it Oprah that when she started dating Stedman, she had also been chasing the high T guys. And I think she even said called some of her boyfriends like gangster types. And uh -huh. then it was actually her therapist that suggested that she continue to date Stedman and to give him a chance. And I think that, um, I think that that's very interesting and I appreciate you so much that I feel so lucky to be sitting here <laughs> talking with you today and I'm learning, I'm learning a lot. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so happy to be here and so happy to get the word out about this because like I said at the beginning, you don't have to be confused about this anymore. There's like science that can help you get what you want. So, you know, and if, you know, there are tons of resources, but of course you can always reach out to me. It's like, there's no reason to be confused about this. You know, and I think too, how this attaches to so many other things in my life. So for example, um, I have some, I have some things with like fear of abandonment and okay. I've recognized that in my life. And I think that going for a person who is high T, you know, I didn't understand when I entered into that marriage that I was more likely to be abandoned yes. by, that, by that person. And yes. that led to years of pain and struggle and only made it even harder for me to get over this fear of abandonment where all the while, if I'm being really, really honest, there were plenty of men who were attracted to me even before I got married. I remember one boyfriend that I had in particular, and he was just the nicest guy. He was, he was gorgeous. He, um, he ended up being a police officer, which tells you protector provider, you know, and I, um, I, I lost interest in him. There was something about him that did not hold my attention because I was not intentional. Correct. You no, know, I was not intentional. Correct. And even, and even into my thirties, you know, I, anyway, enough about me. And yes, yes. I, <laughs> but I feel you. Yes, you're absolutely right. And when you become intentional and that pie changes, then it's like, you see the cop with new eyes. You're like, Oh, Oh, you're right here. Yeah, like, wow, <laughs> you know, here's this, here's this really amazing person. And then I think to myself, well, I hope I, you know, I'm 44 now. I hope I haven't missed out, but I'm glad that I'm taking this out. time. And, you know, can I just tell you something else? The very first time that I was attracted to, we'll call it an, a moderate T guy, and we haven't talked about LT, so I'm interested in that too. But the very first time I got into a relationship with an MT guy, I was actually so excited because I thought I don't ever have to worry and my comfort level in this relationship was through the roof and then it still didn't work out and I ended up um, I mean I probably loved him the bond that we had was so much stronger than any other bond that I'd had prior to that but it, the relationship didn't work out and I was crushed I bet so you know I thought here I was finally here I was dating like the safe guy. He was a he was a scientist and I had so much respect for his work and um yeah, but in the so, end <laughs> I actually have to I have stuff to say about that too that I think would be valuable to hear. Um and again, this goes back to more like research, cutting edge research. So it looks as though males and females attach at different paces right? Um, at different speeds, right? So if you have a lot of testosterone, really high testosterone, those, the testosterone kind of subverts oxytocin and the other hormones that lead to bonding and attachment. Um, but can, if you can imagine, women have higher levels of oxytocin and lower levels of testosterone. So it's easier to have attachment and bonds. 
But if you're dating someone with significantly higher levels of testosterone, it's going to take them a bit longer to attach in a healthy way. It's, you're going to attach much sooner. You're going to feel love. You're going to be like, I know it. I can feel it. He's probably not going to feel it yet. So what happens is we expect men to be where we are and our knowledge of I love him, I feel good about him, and we act like they're at the same pace. They're not at the same pace. If we were to break it into stages, we'd be like in stage four of love. The man is still in stage one. So we have to intentionally slow down our pace, be mindful of where the man is, and try to proceed in a way that's like in tandem so that we don't have these misaligned love stages. And I think that's a huge thing that happens for women because then men get put off. They're like, you're talking about you love me. We just sat down and had food. Right. So there's a pacing issue. And if we learn about the pacing issue, then we can slow the courtship down and have a much more harmonious in tandem aligned courtship process. And that's the number three. That's the other thing that I do with clients after I help them get conscious and intentional, pick the type. Then we work on, OK, how do we have a healthy, harmonious, tandemly aligned courtship? So before we move on to. Before we move on to our third point here today, I just want to acknowledge Romeo because he has left us a comment and said, I am a high T guy, full of drive, passion, and vitality. He actually recently separated from a relationship and that over time he said he realized that he lost himself and he forgot, he had forgotten what it was like to be masculine. So yesterday he said he met up with his ex and with one small contact with her, she could make me weak in the knees. Interesting. So what he is referencing is feminine energy being so powerful that no level of T can resist the power of the true feminine energy. I've been around other women since our separation and no, none have had that impact. So I love this because um, Romeo is really acknowledging, you know, both what's going on in the masculine and the feminine. So thank you, Romeo, for sharing that. And I'm sure you probably have more to add to that, Conjit. And then we I can do. go on to our step three. Yeah, I absolutely do. I think that uh, Romeo brought up a great point. Your women's real um, source of, I guess, magnetism with men is the femininity. It's not being competitive. It's not being dominant and aggressive. It is being uh, open and feminine. Now, here's the thing. It's important to still be mindful about uh, how you express vulnerability, right? You still want to make sure a guy is a good, safe guy. But when you've determined that a guy is a good, safe guy, the thing that brings him in is you opening up and expressing your feminine side. And I, and I think you, uh, Romeo mentioned that his ex-wife, so this is a woman that he had a relationship with who she had already deemed he was a safe man and she had opened up and shown his feminine side to, and that's what pulled him in. So and continued to, because and one, I think, he didn't say if it was a wife, just an ex. Or an ex, like, an ex. Yeah, but it looks like, you know, after he was separated from her, seeing her again, he he immediately, you know, had that exact same feeling, feeling. towards her, which I think right. is beautiful. And I think that um, I just want to acknowledge and honor you, Romeo, for being so aware of yes. that. So thank yes. you so much. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So take us into step three, the final. You've taught us so much. So Conjit has shared with us today about choosing the level of relationship you want, whether that is like an Ivy League, Harvard level relationship, whether that is a state college level relationship or a junior college level relationship. And then we talked about step two, which I'm so into this live and into the moment. What? Tell me just again what the second step was. Um, figuring out where a guy is on a spectrum, high T, oh, yes. MT, low T. Yes, of course it was. So yeah, <laughs> measure, like figuring out, recognizing where a guy is in his level of T and what impact that's going to have on the relationship. And now we're going to move into your third and final thing that you work with, with your clients. So what, so what is that? So I talked about it just a second ago. It's the idea of understanding that males and females tend to attach at different paces. And so learning just just first of all just accepting this concept that you're probably going to feel something at a different time than the man is going to feel 
And just being aware of that dynamic and how it's different can help you structure your courtship in a way that's harmonious and aligned, right? Because as I was saying, one of the biggest challenges women have is like, they feel love, you know, after the fifth date, let's just say. And so they profess love to the guy and the guy's like, wait a minute, I'm, you're just a pretty female that I'm sitting down and eating food with. What do you mean you love me, right? They're just not there yet, right? So it, it actually goes back to what I was saying in the way, way, way beginning. Looking at your courtship and looking at the process and not just going, this is how I think, this is what I feel, so I'm going to say and do what I feel. No, you have to think about what is your partner thinking? Where are they in the process, right? Considering that point of view as well as your own and then making a conscious decision about how to proceed, right, to get your relationship goal. Uh, if you're looking for a lasting love in marriage, you're going to have to be really considerate about your partner's point of view. If you're looking for a one night stand, less considerate. I don't care which one you pick. That's on you. But my gift to you is the way to think about it, right? Empowering yourself with understanding the different variables so you can go, hmm, what am I trying to do? Okay, so yeah, step three, let me think about the courtship. If I'm looking to get married to a quality guy, then that means that I'm going to have to be aware that he is bonding at a different pace than I am, and I'm going to have to proceed in a different kind of way. Yeah. And, you know, it, it kind of makes me think, too, because sometimes I, I see that people do have different opinions about things like one night stands. So maybe wherever they're at in their journey or like if it's a high tea guy, he's not going to judge a woman so much for perhaps a, for certain behaviors. But then maybe if it's a moderate tea guy, then he's going to look at the woman that's going to have a one night stand and think, that's not really within my relationship goals right now. And so there's a whole spectrum, mm -hmm. Correct. there's a whole step Correct. spectrum of behavior that Correct. goes along and matches up with those first two steps. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and that's why it's so important to be intentional. You have to consider the male point of view, right? Some males will say, you know, one night stand is great. I'm open to it, but I don't want to marry the woman I have a one night stand with, which you can take that information and go, do I want to marry him? Nope, one night stand. Right. Or you could say, you know what, I, I actually might like this guy. So I need to proceed in a different way. Right. But if you were not to acknowledge that for some men, promiscuity equals um, lack of ethics, if you were to ignore that information, then you would probably end up behaving in a way that won't get you your relationship goals. That's why you need to understand where they're coming from. One of the things that I've always wondered about women is that, um, and then again, this is no judgment. Like no I don't, judgment. I don't care where any woman is at on her, like where she's comfortable with, but for whatever reason, I have never been like a one night stand kind of person. I've been more of a slow burn kind of person. And I have friends that are really sort of have this, oh, let's just play. And, you know, mm -hmm. some of them even have multiple partners and um, again, no judgment, but right. I always wondered why they're okay with that. And I'm not, and it's not really because I think that there's anything wrong with it, but like, I physically can't be that person. I can't even open up with somebody. I can't give myself to them physically um, unless there's a deep connection already established. It's almost like I need the connection first mm -hmm. and, I, and I need the security and I need to know, like, I need to know where I'm at with this person. You know, what are we building before I could have any level of intimacy with them? And that has been true my entire life. Now, I have something interesting to say about that. And again, you know, even with the T stuff, just keep in mind, T is just one variable. There's a ton of other variables. There's character issues. There's just one variable that we're isolating and looking at. So I think for women... Women with higher drives, and again, this is just one variable, a lot of those women are higher T women, okay? They just have higher T levels. And so for them, sex can be something that's a little bit more like a masculine experience with sex. They can compartmentalize it a bit easier than women with lower levels of T. There's nothing wrong with it. And again, I say that because I think there should not be judgment against those women. There could be more compassionate to say, hey, some women have higher T levels. You know, they're more driven for sex. That's just how they're born. Just like someone is born black or someone is born gay. It's like, 
I've often wondered, like, so there's been times that I've had a curiosity and I've wondered, like, I wonder what it would be like, because I thought mentally, maybe there was something wrong with me Hmm. and that, like, what did it say about me that I couldn't experience this level of freedom? And Mm -hmm. so I was actually judging myself Mm. for not um, being able to experience that. But I know that it only would lead to heartache if I did, because, um, because it's just not something that's in my capabilities. Right. So, but I also want to just say that even though it's like the love and connection I need, that it hasn't really affected my sex drive. And so actually, um, because my, my sex drive was, has always been quite high. But what I will say is that it made it extremely difficult for me, especially going from married to unmarried and having to be without a partner in times even now. And I cannot believe I am sharing this level of vulnerability on a live video right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know what to think about myself mm-hmm. right now. But, <laughs> but the reality is that my body physically suffered and ached because I wasn't um, having that sexual part of my life fulfilled. Yes. So when I would look at other women who were able to do that, um, I thought like, why can't I just be that way? Like, why couldn't I just have a sexual partner? But I can't because, so I have both like the high drive. Right. I have this high need for love and connection. So So to me, to me, what it sounds like is you're probably like, a moderately high T female, right? Because uh, and like I said, there's probably other variables here too. It could be hypersexuality for some people. It could be how they're brought up. It could be some people have different attachment styles. But if we're just maybe looking at the T, right? So same with guys. So some guys have high levels of T, but they have very strong character and very uh, their strong awareness. And so they're able to, the strong character and the strong awareness is kind of able to bind the impulses of the T. And then some people just have such high T that it can't bind their impulses or they just, it did, they just can't, uh, you know, examples, all the people in jail, right? A lot of them, they just have such strong drives that overpower their character. And uh, that's just the reality for some people, right? So, yeah, right. So maybe you're just someone who has high levels, but you have the character and the willpower to bind it. And some people don't. And I love that you're saying that because there are some, probably some guys watching that are high T, but also have that character trait yes. where they, yes. where they can very much, um, control it. In fact, those yes. guys actually might be the ultimate catch because, yes. <laughs> because yes. you get to enjoy both the high T and the loyalty that their character is bringing. So, okay. Yes. I, I don't want to keep you all day conjit. I want to just, <laughs> I, again, you know, when we met on your podcast and I know we have a mutual friend, Kelly Glover, um, she was really excited that I was going to be talking with you today. I just want to share, I want to thank you so much for sharing all of this information. And I know that you've got a link that I'll be sharing. Do you want to tell us about this, the marrying model? Yeah. So the marrying model is just the first piece of information I shared with you guys, looking at a normative distribution and trying to understand okay, what kind of guy, let me think about my relationship goals, Stanford, Harvard, junior college state. And then once you kind of figure that out, trying to see, okay, so what guy might be the best fit? We didn't talk about LT guys, you know, but you can always reach out to me. Um, Just go to my website. It's on the page that I give you. It's conjuntfarrell.com. Send me an email saying you'd like to know more about the dating stuff. I'm happy to help you. But it helps you to just kind of go, hmm, yeah, what kind of guy based on T levels might be the best fit for me? Again, there's other variables to think about uh, character, personality, but we're just looking at the T and we're just working from that one particular variable. And I hope that I put a little video on there too. I hope that video just, um, and this work helps you to take, helps to take some of the mystery away from dating, right? Like we can't know everything about a unique individual, but if we know something about biology, boy, makes it a lot easier than if we didn't. Yeah. And then uh, I just want to add to that, that I wish I would have known this 20 years ago. So if (laughs) there, you know, if, if there is some young person in your life, I would definitely recommend sharing uh, the marrying model with for with them because Conjit has been so generous to provide that for us. So that link will be in the comments below. And um, is there any other, so also, can you say your website one more time? 
Yeah, it's just my name. It's conjitfarrell.com. So www.k-o-n-g-i-t-f-a-r-r-e-l-l.com, conjitfarrell.com. Great. And, um, yep. Just contact me and tell me it's about dating and I'm happy to, you know, talk to you a bit more about it. Yeah, that was, and I think that um, our episode of your show just aired maybe a few days ago. Oh no, we're still coming. You're in uh, March and I'm going to oh, be I'm... doing some extra promo for that. You guys, it's an amazing episode. It was so good. Is it really? Oh, I can't it's wait really to hear is. it. Oh, yeah. So good. yeah. I cannot wait to hear it. I'm going to go on um, Samantha Skelly's show later today called Hungry for Happiness. So I'm super okay. excited about that, but I don't know when it will air. Okay. And all right, well, I'm going to say goodbye to everyone. But before I do, I just want to say that I want to thank everyone for our little tech issues that we had in the beginning. And the next time I try Zoom, I'm definitely going to do it where if someone has a question, I'll bring you on the camera and you can talk to myself or you can talk to my expert and ask them a question directly. So, all right, I'm going to try to, we'll see what happens when I try to disconnect all of this. <laughs> Bye for now, everybody. I Bye. love you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, this is Mary. Thanks so much for watching. Check out a free chapter of my book, Conscious Communications at maryshores.com forward slash free chapter. The link is in the description below.